Once again, we're starting with the close-up. Today we're reviewing Tropical Smash from Mountain Dew Game Fuel. Looks more like Sunny D to me. What a close-up. And then a far away. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Greg Q. Together with Mr. Happy 0121. And today, part two of the Mountain Dew. No, I did not intend that to rhyme. We're just going to get into it. It's Tropical Smash. Why wouldn't you make this green? Call it Hulk Smash. Tie it into something. That's a good idea. I mean, I'm sure the orange flavor is somehow based on something. Again, we did no research on purpose. But in the no research, one thing did bite me in the butt. <laughs> Arctic Blast, I thought it had been out for a while. It had been a 7-Eleven Slurpee flavor in the past. Uh -huh. Once again, no, no research done here. Flashback. If I had to guess, I would guess this is going to taste like Sunny D. Let's see. Back in the day, real quick, he says, oh, God. Have you ever uh, not had an energy drink for about a week and then drank one? Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Drink one. Those of you that recognize this color know what I'm saying. Drink two. Once again, um, we mentioned it yesterday, but you know, sometimes people don't watch two days in a row. 170 calories, they've done the bit where they did the reduced sugar. Not really a fan. It does impact the flavor. Once again, they did try to make up for the lack of sugar with more caffeine. Drink three. Quick shout out to whoever came up with this color scheme. Because I'm sure the people in the marketing department very much appreciate that it's very unphotogenic. It's hard to pick up. Something about the colors just don't work. It doesn't pop. It's too bright. Especially when against the full bottle. It's giving me like a headache. What grade do you give the Mountain Dew Game Fuel Tropical Smash? 75. I think it's um, like subtly better than the other one. You had some keen insights yesterday. Did we no, use those up? We did, but I don't have any today. It just kind of tastes like, I don't know. It's a Denny Green. Hmm. Interesting. I hadn't... Well, you know what? It is, but for me, for a different reason. I'll ask, have you ever had a Sunny D? I'm sure I have, but I don't remember having one. Based purely on color alone, just no research. And people say, well, you influenced your own thinking by saying that. It tastes like a Sunny D to me. A really good Sunny D, mind you, but a Sunny D. Uh, sunny D has that flavor that's kind of like orange juice right in your face. And then it ends. This has that, but then it goes past it. I'm going to give this an 84. I think I liked it just a little bit better than the one yesterday, and I kind of liked the one yesterday. He went ahead and drank the rest of his bottle and has not changed his opinion as of start of this video. Is that correct? That's correct. Didn't talk about it yesterday because I know you don't care, but I went to the Bruno Mars concert this week. Oh, cool. It was super awesome. Was it? You know, I would say that you should experience it and should go, but, you know... There's people I don't want to see, Luke Bryan, uh, that you couldn't drag me to for like a million bucks. But I will say, if you're on the fence about Bruno Mars, and why would you be? That would be painful. If you're on the fence about Bruno Mars, spend the money. He has the best light show going. Sometimes, if you're kind of like, ah, and then they just stand there and sing, it's, it's kind of a bummer. But if they got like Pink Floyd lights going and lasers and fire and pyro, you can sometimes shine up a turd pretty nicely. I enjoyed it. Plus, I had one of those classic things happen where I'm at a concert and I saw two people almost get in a fight because one bumped into the other one. At a Bruno Mars concert? Yes. Doesn't matter. At any concert, this happens. I've seen this happen in a mosh pit where someone got mad because they were bumped. That's silly. You should, should kind of expect that. Yeah. Pro tip. <laughs> You're at a concert, surrounded by people, many of them drunk, and the person that, like, bumps into you was probably pushed 12 people back in a chain. Yeah. One time at a Queensryche concert, that was in, like, it wasn't even a mosh pit anymore. It was just the up front where they're just pushing. Yeah. There was a girl that was, like, every 30 seconds, she would take her elbows like this, and whoever was behind her, she would go like that oh, and go into them. That's not cool. Hard. You're in this. You put yourself in it. Yeah. And the person behind you has like, I don't know, Queen's right, 8,000 people pushing. 
I came up with my plan because I was like third row and she was like second. And what happens is you end up kind of just going like this back and forth. You don't go forward or back, but you kind of go sideways. You can't hit a woman, even if she elbows you rudely. But there should, be, there should be a suitable response. Yeah. Sure enough, about six songs later, I ended up right behind this uh, charmer. And I gave her one, because everybody does get one. Okay. I gave her one, and not even knowing yet everybody gets one, but it is now a thing. Boom, 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 she elbows me. Doesn't even look bad. Could have elbowed a baby in the face. Yeah. A, a baby <laughs> at a Queens concert in a mosh Queens, show. right. And somebody's holding the baby just right. Yeah. But you never know. A kid. Could have elbowed a kid. Oh, and get, babies have those soft heads. You could probably smash a baby's skull with your elbow. This was like 1990. 90. People did weirder things than taking babies to Queensryche, probably without hearing protection. Long story short, I had formulated a plan. Wasn't half a song later, here come the elbows. Uh oh. Bat, bat, bat. Just so happened, thankfully, to enact my plan, I needed one thing beer. Beer. Did you dump it on her? I had about this much beer left, and it was, it was costly because beers there were like 12 bucks in 1990 for a big one. But I dumped about 14 ounces of beer squarely on her head. Oh. I fuck, I hovered it right over the little yeah. dumpers. Oop. That showed her. Did it, she stop elbowing? It kind of did because she didn't move for a long time. Then she went like this and I went. <laughs> and then she left. Oh, Problem cool. solved. No violence. Good job. Let that be a lesson to you kids. Don't elbow people at Queensryche concerts in 1990. If that ever comes up for you. Do you even know who Queensryche is? No, I don't. Queensryche? Mm-hmm. Not Queen. I didn't get to see Queen. What's Reich mean? Draw your own conclusions. Okay. It wasn't one of those. There was no... Well, you know. The band that opened for them was from Germany. Their, <laughs> their name was Typo Negative. I'm going to play you after this five seconds of Typo Negative. All right. The guy does this uh, bad Dracula imitation. Uh, She's in love with herself. That's the song. She likes the dark. No? <laughs> no. Not familiar with that one? <laughs> I'm not familiar with that. I didn't go to see them, but somehow they were on the circuit where I ended up seeing them five times. They just kept opening for people, kind of like the Scorpions. I just kept seeing the Scorpions, even though I just didn't want to. But anyway, Queensryche had Silent Lucidity, the Pink Floyd ripoff. Never heard of them. Is that a Pink Floyd cover band? No, but they sounded a lot like it. Uh, and they were one of the first hair metal bands to do a concept album with Operation Mindcrime. Uh, Kids these days, I tell you, not knowing their fourth tier kind of sort of hair bands that were precursors to grunge. Yeah. So disappointed. You ready? I'm ready. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You can find us on all social media, Mr. Happy 0121. Until next time, stay vigilant.